Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katherine Rule, and today I'm going to do an ice dyeing video for you guys. I'm gonna show you how to make this t-shirt here. Um, this is a geode pattern and I did it with ice dye. So as you can see, there's all these different colors in the pattern and it's actually just one dye. So depending on the kind of dye that you use, some of them will actually split into other colors. So this one is brushed steel and I did this one in the muck, which means um, I let the piece sit in the melted ice and the dye mixture for overnight. So um, this one turned out really beautiful. I'm gonna show you my process. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more dyeing videos. It really helps my channel and I really appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and let's get started. With a geode like right here, I want it to be off centered um, and up top. So I'm going to just put rubber bands around the scrunched up little piece that I've made and I'm going to work my way down doing the same action. There's the first geode so then I'm just going to do another one. And um, these rubber bands kept breaking which is really annoying but um, I ended up just tying the broken ones together to make like a really big rubber band which ended up working fine for this so when you're doing a t-shirt they can get pretty thick so if you're using real rubber bands they don't break as much but I just have a bunch of these rubber bands and I want to use them um, they're hair rubber bands that I got at the dollar store and I hate them so I just want to use them up so I'm using them for tie-dye and you can like make your own really big rubber bands, which is what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna keep binding the fabric as I go and tying them up. Okay, so now it's ready to soak in the soda ash. And I am really excited to see how it turns out. So I have about two gallons of water in here and I'm going to put in about three fourths of a cup of soda ash. Um, I'm just using what I have. I think that you could use a little more soda ash if you have it, but I just, this is what I have, so I'm just gonna use it. And 
I've used more and I've used less for ice dyeing, so I'm sure it'll be fine. So I'm just going to make sure it's completely dissolved before I add the fabric. Okay, so I'm going to add my t-shirt. And I'm going to let it soak for an hour, just for good measure. So now I'm going to prepare my dyeing station and I have a tray here that I'm going to let the ice melt into. It's a tray I don't use for food or anything like that, just for dyeing. And I'm going to make a little mold out of cardboard and duct tape. So this is going to be a circular shape that is going to help keep the ice on top of the um, t-shirt for as long as possible so it can melt directly onto the t-shirt. Um, I want it to be on top of the t-shirt for as long as it's still ice, which hopefully will be like 12 hours or so. And um, this is going to help contain it because I don't want to put too much ice in because that will uh, dilute the dye too much. All right, so I've made my little mold out of cardboard and duct tape and I'm going to spiral the t-shirt like this so that way I can put the ice on top and I can use plenty of ice but I don't have to use way too much because I don't want it to be completely soaked out and I want to save some of my ice. Put a little more in there. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna use my dye. I'm going to put brush steel in. Now I'm wearing my mask, so uh, this stuff is powdery and it's not good to breathe in. So I'm wearing a mask and I'm just gonna do some brush steel here. Oop, that's a lot. All right, so this is all going to melt down and go onto the bottom, pool onto the bottom. So I don't want to put like way too much dye in there. I'm going to let that sit now and watch as it starts to melt. Okay, so this is melting and you can see the water the dye is starting to come out on the sides slowly but surely so that's a good thing and you can kind of see in there a little bit of what the dye looks like you can't tell yet but it's starting to kind of split you can see in there so that's very exciting I'm just gonna keep waiting for it to melt and check on it periodically. All right, so this one's been soaking for um, 24 hours and I'm going to take it out of the muck or this dyed water and rinse it and then I'm going to take it apart. Hey everyone. So I rinsed this one already and I'm going to open it up now and see how the pattern turned out. I'm wondering, maybe I'll just actually see if I can undo this like this. All right, I'm ready to open it to see for the first time. Are you ready? Let's see here. Whoa. That turned out awesome. So this is brushed steel, just one color. And you can see there's a lot of different colors within the color, which is really, really cool. So this is kind of like a geode pattern that I did. 
And I like how it has the color and then the white. It's a really nice distribution. I think this is gonna look really cool on. So I'm gonna rinse it again and then I'm gonna wash this. So now this t-shirt has been washed and dried and you can see the color changed a little bit but not too much and it's just really really stunning like I said these colors split and you can just see all the different shades that are making up the gray it's really really amazing so I'm really pleased with this shirt and I will put this up for sale on my website. So if you wanna buy one, if you're not into making it, you can go and check it out.